Grab Yang Bilis, a program that ran for only a few years but is now on the brink of making history, and how it connects to the Philippines is moving faster than expected. For those watching the rise of defense technology in Asia, the KF-21 Barame Block II is no longer a simple concept. It is now a flying statement, fully prepared for the next era of air power. And according to increasingly strong discussions, the Philippines may become the first country to acquire the Block II variant. For those wondering why there is so much noise surrounding this aircraft, we need to look back at what the KF-21 is and why Block II is so significant. The Borame is South Korea's project to create an advanced multi-role fighter that can serve for decades. It is not just an upgrade of an existing platform, it is essentially a new generation of air power, positioned between 4.5th and near 5th generation capabilities. It has stealth shaping, modern avionics, a high-powered ESA radar, and open architecture ready to accept new weapon systems. But Block 1, the first variant to be released, is primarily an air-to-air -air platform. This means it is designed for aerial combat, interception, air dominance, and defensive missions. It still lacks integrated strike weapons, especially guided air-to-ground munitions, that are critical for modern operations. That is why Block 2 is the true game-changer. This is where full multi-role capability enters. Air-to-ground precision strike, maritime attack, electronic warfare improvements, and deeper weapons integration. In simple terms, this is the version with complete teeth, a fighter capable of responding to any mission, from air defense to strategic strike. And this is where the Philippines becomes even more interesting. While some countries waited for final evaluations before showing interest, the Philippines already has a deepening relationship with South Korea when it comes to defense procurement. Starting from the FA-50PH light combat aircraft, it became clear that the Korean defense industry is reliable and easy to work with. And because the Philippine Air Force already has experience with Korean platforms, transitioning to the more advanced Boramai becomes a natural step if the modernization program continues. Several defense reports revealed that South Korea offered a KF-21 Block 1 package to the Philippines. Ten units, including integrated logistics support. The plan is clear. Block 1 would be delivered first. But one important detail stands out. The entire KF-21 platform was designed to be upgraded to Block 2 without replacing the aircraft. This is why many analysts say that if the Philippines becomes an early adopter, it is very possible that we could become the first foreign user of Block 2 once it becomes available, especially if production timelines and final contract terms align. And this is where the question arises, why does everything seem to be moving so fast? Why is it grabe ang bilis? There is a clear reason. South Korea has accelerated its defense development over the past five years due to rising regional tensions. This affected the timelines of the KF-21 program. The previously expected strike-capable Block 2, initially projected for the early 2030s, has now been accelerated. Today, there is a possible 20, 27, 20, 28 operational window. This is incredibly fast compared to typical fighter development programs that take nearly two decades. In the Philippines, the KF-21 has entered the top shortlist for modern multi-role fighter acquisition. And because of the strategic importance of the West Philippine Sea, the need for a more advanced air defense capability has become urgent. This simultaneous timing, the accelerated development in Korea and the Philippines' urgent modernization, opens the possibility of the country becoming the first foreign operator of the KF-21 Block II. But this is not just about speed. There is deeper strategic logic. The Philippines is located at the center of one of the hottest flashpoints in Asia. It needs rapid air response capability, extended range sensors, and high-performance fighters capable of responding to any contingency. Compared to the current fleet, existing light fighters have limited radar range, weapons load, and endurance. The KF-21 Block II, on the other hand, can carry more weapons, has more advanced sensors, and possesses broader detection and engagement capability. This includes an integrated AESA radar capable of locking multiple targets and using advanced missiles. In a maritime environment, this is a massive advantage. The ocean is open and offers no cover, Whoever sees first and reacts first, wins. The KF-21 Block II was built for this, an aircraft not just for defense, but for the projection of power. If the deal succeeds, it would have a significant effect not only on hardware for the PATH, but on the entire defense ecosystem of the country. Reports have surfaced about the possibility of a Philippine-based maintenance, repair, and overhaul, 
MRO facility, or even a small assembly partnership. If this happens, the Philippines would not only be a buyer, it would become a regional sustainment hub, a step never before achieved in the aviation history of the nation. But of course, this is not a one-way road. A twin-engine fighter is expensive, its maintenance footprint is large, and block upgrades, even if modular, come with cost considerations. If the deal pushes through, the Philippines must have a long-term sustainment plan, not just funding for buying the aircraft. But when we look at the trajectory of the modernization program, it is clear that the PF is trying to transition from a basic defense posture to an integrated, credible, and modern Air Force. And the KF-21 fits perfectly into that direction. A fighter with advanced air-to-air -air capability for air defense, full strike capability for ground and maritime targets, and growth potential for electronic warfare, beyond visual range missiles, and future weapons integration. In the regional context, the Philippines is among the countries with the highest urgency for multi-role modernization. Because of this, early acquisition of an advanced fighter carries political and strategic significance. Becoming the first foreign user of the KF-21 Block II is not just about technology, it is a message. A message that the country is ready to rise to a higher level of defense, ready to keep up with neighbors, and ready to protect its territory using modern equipment. But let it be clear, nothing is final. The Philippines has not yet signed a contract. There is no official confirmation from the government that Block II is the target or that we will be the first buyers. Statements come from industry reports, defense observers, and indications from presentations at defense expos. But if we base everything on practicality, logic, and timing, it becomes clear why the Philippines appears frequently as the leading potential operator. As the coming months approach, discussions will only become tighter. And at this point, the question is no longer, can the Philippines handle the KF-21? But rather, is the Philippines ready to become an early adopter of one of the most advanced fighters in Asia? If the country acquires Block II, it will become the foundation of air power for the next three decades. And it will become part of an integrated defense architecture. Together with maritime surveillance aircraft, coast-based missile systems, and radar networks. With this combination, detection becomes tighter, response becomes faster, and the country's defense capability becomes more credible. The rise of the KF-21 has been incredibly fast, but the question now is, will the Philippines match this speed, or will it simply watch as others seize the opportunity? If it is true that the Philippines will be the first to get Block II, it will be historic. Not only because of the technology, but because of the message it carries. A nation ready to modernize quickly, ready to invest in the future, and ready to assert its rights over its vast waters. And in the end, the Brahma is not just a fighter jet. It is a symbol of speed, capability, and a new direction for the countries ready to fly at a higher level.